Hi you guys, this is Nicole from My Carolina Garden. Now I garden in southeastern North Carolina. I am on the coast, but I am considered growing zone eight, which means that while I love tropical style flowers, I don't get to enjoy them all as perennial. A lot of tropical style plants really start in zone nine, zone nine to 11. Those beauties get to survive greatly. But here, I still get winter time. So again, I don't get to enjoy all of them as perennial. Annual or perennial though, it's the style and vibe of these tropical beauties that I just adore. So I'd love to dive into some of the comparison between a tropical style hibiscus and a perennial or hardy hibiscus. If I may, what I would love to do is a comparison between hardy hibiscus. I have two examples in this shot right here. I have one to my left with the light pink flowers and then I have another one to my right and that has the magenta, also round shaped flowers. So those are my two hardy hibiscus that you can see here. My perennial hibiscus at this point are in pots and I can't move them because they are part of my irrigation system and so we will go visit them separately. But in talking about some of these things here, very, very obviously to start us off, we have the perennial versus tropical characteristic. So if you are perennial or also called hardy hibiscus, then you are going to be much more cold tolerant. So these plants are on average cold tolerant to zone five. So say from five to eight, that's where these guys thrive. And then the tropical style hibiscus goes further than that from nine to 11. Zones nine to 11 get to enjoy that as perennial. Here's the thing for me. I am right here in zone eight, which means I get to enjoy the best of both worlds. I do have tropical style hibiscus that has overwintered naturally in my ground for me, which means I'm on the line of where it actually should survive a winter, and it has. I'd like to show you that baby as well. But my perennial hibiscus here, this one happens to be the copper king and the flowers are so large. Right now we're about nine inches in diameter. Some hardy hibiscus gets to be 12 inches in diameter for the flowers. It is, they're so gorgeous and luscious. One of the keys here is that the perennial hibiscus actually needs winter, that cool down time to survive and thrive. So really, if we popped into zones nine and 10, that's not where these babies want to live. So again, I get the best of both worlds because I happen to be right on the line there. Let's talk about some other things as I walk around with you. Both the tropical and the hardy hibiscus come in many varieties. So let's be clear about that as well. I'll show you the examples that I have, but they do come in many varieties. So again, this if this is the Copper King, we have dark colored foliage on here and you can see my flower is a very light delicate pink and we start out with almost like a wash of paint from the inside being that dark beautiful dark pink or magenta in the middle and it washes out through the veins to the end of the flower tips so hardy hibiscus can come with green foliage or this darkly colored foliage and we can also vary in height size. We can do three feet tall to eight feet tall. So this probably right now is getting close to five feet tall. And as my growing season continues throughout the rest of the summer, I'll probably see about another two feet of growth on these guys before they finish blooming, which will be in the fall. So over here in my garden, as we get even closer to my other example of the hardy hibiscus here, this is called the Luna Rose. So the Luna Rose has the green leaves with the magenta flowers. This right here is my example of the tropical hibiscus that I actually did over winter and has been with me for about three years or so now. This guy is late to start, so it's much smaller in size because of it just being naturalized in the ground. 
If I had overwintered him indoors and then popped him back outside when the warmer weather started, of course we'd already have that amazing growth because it didn't have to completely die back to the ground. But in my ground here in zone eight, it does, the whole top is 100% gone and the growth has to start. So I probably won't see flowers on this guy for about another month, I would guess. So tropical style did say as a perennial for me, but it is very late to get it show on the road, if you will. Some of the similarities in the hibiscus, the two different styles that we're talking about, they all or they both want full sun conditions. You're going to see them thrive the most in the full sun conditions. Also, a really interesting thing to note is hibiscus is in the mallow family. And you know a couple other examples of things in the mallow family? Okra, cotton. It's, it seems crazy because they're not exactly sure what the heck is going on in the mallow family, but that's where the hibiscus resides. A cousin to the hibiscus that we're probably familiar with is the Rose of Sharon. The Rose of Sharon has leaves very similar in style to this tropical one right here, and the flower blooms are definitely hibiscus-like, but the Rose of Sharon it can be a huge shrub, also perennial in colder tolerant areas, which is so awesome. Incidentally, if I lived in an area in zone 10, let's say, where I had the tropical hibiscus where it was perennial, these babies can get really big. They can be full on shrubs and be, be huge bushes with lots of flowers if they were taken care of properly. Uh, largely, these guys, all they really need from me here is making sure they have water, making sure that sun requirement is met. And then I do want to keep them trimmed. So if I see them getting leggy or if they have leaf loss, I want to snip off those branches so they can start fresh and new and they will. So as we pop over here to my tropical hibiscus, another difference to note between the two styles is the colors that the plants are available in you are going to have more varieties in the tropical style hibiscus. Both of them are really going to have red, pink, and I think white would be safe to say for all of them. But in the tropical style, you're going to get peach, you're going to get orange, you will also get like hybrid varieties of this tropical style that have mixes of the colors in there as well. So, so the color selection would be a difference. Something that is also similar between the two. The blooms are not long lasting for each one. So when a flower opens up on a bud, for the tropical style, it's probably gonna last two or three days each flower. On the perennial hibiscus or the hardy, we're talking like one day. One day it's gonna open up, give us a grand show because it's huge and gorgeous, and then you're gonna see that wilt away, and then the one beside it is going to open up. So we're lucky on both style plants that they they both have plentiful buds on them. So even if I lose all of these flowers tomorrow, I have so many more that are already ready to take its place. So that's another good thing. Both of them are also going to bloom largely and on average, depending on what variety you have and where exactly you are, in June and then into fall, that sort of thing. So th they could get off to a little bit of a later start, these are not necessarily going to be spring blooming flowers at all. A third style hardy hibiscus that I have in my yard is the Texas Red Star. This will be my first summer with this guy, so unfortunately I don't have any blooms at the moment to give you an example, but I have lots of buds at the top. They seem to be up high on the plant, so I'm going to guess the blooms will just happen like that. Now this one you can see is super tall, and we're going to just measure it and see exactly how tall it is. They're both similar, but the one behind me is a little taller. We'll go with 74 inches, even though one of those in the back is taller. So 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, over six feet tall on this guy. Now the flowers will look different on this one. They are going to look much more just like red stars, like pointier style flower shape. 
As well as the leaves here, the leaves also kind of look long and finger-like in comparison to the other perennial hibiscus that we saw. So it's just very interesting. The variety is vast and that makes it even more exciting. This peach colored tropical style hibiscus is one that I keep on my front porch. Now it is in the shade right now and we did say that they like full sun, but trust me when I say it gets lots of afternoon sun over here. So this one has been with me for a while and it overwinters in its pot in the greenhouse. I have had no leaf loss overwintering this particular hibiscus at all. It just never even skips a beat. It blooms on and off throughout the winter in its overwintering state. And then here we are and we just pop out with tons of flowers and tons of buds as well. Now this tropical style hibiscus is called the Fiesta hibiscus. Now this is one of those hybrids that has the multicolored flower blooms. Oh my gosh, this is my most favorite tropical hibiscus of all. I wish that it was some, that I had some flower blooms actually open. I have some buds on here waiting, one, another one down here that you can't really see. I had this one by my pool last year and it was just stunning. I overwintered this in the greenhouse. Now this one did have some shock to it. It did lose all of its leaves while being overwintered, but when it was ready to come back out into the normal air, if you will, I just simply trimmed back all of the stems where we lost our leaves and it shot back out like this. So it's a gorgeous shrub. It's doing very, very well. And like I said, lots of buds. I'm sorry, doesn't have that perfect example for it blooming right now for you though. My fourth example of a hardy hibiscus that I have is this one right here. This one is called the Starry Starry Night and it does have similarities to the first one we saw, the Copper King, in the sense that it has the dark foliage and a light pink colored flower. Now this flower differs a bit because yes, it has the dark interior magenta color, but it almost has a watercolor effect out of the veining here so the pink extends through the petals. So this one is newer for me than the Copper King. The Copper King's flower that was measuring for me at nine inches, Let's just see for fun how many inches this one is. Ah, this one is also nine inches. Okay, so the flower size is actually the same on both of those. That's really awesome. And hopefully you can see my red tropical hibiscus in the pot almost like right over the top of this guy to the background. Hibiscus is absolutely one of my favorite flowers. I love the vibe it gives you. It makes you feel elegant. It makes you feel like it's summer. It makes you feel like you're in the Caribbean or somewhere awesome and tropical. That's why I love to surround myself with them. But the fact that you can get different varieties of the hardy hibiscus, and again, cold tolerant to zone five, oh my gosh. It's just something I highly, highly recommend. Now, two things to look out for if you're getting hibiscus. They are both pests. One is the Japanese beetle does like to eat holes in some of your foliage. I don't happen to see an example right this second, but you will notice some holes, round shaped holes from them. So we wanna make sure that we're careful looking out. And the second pest is little tiny caterpillars that want to eat almost like straight line looks in the leaves. So two things we wanna look out for if we have these guys in our yard. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that I have inspired you to go buy some hibiscus, perennial or tropical. Thank you for your support as always. I appreciate everyone's comments and kindness. And until next time, happy planting.